Yeah, Smart War Games here. Let's check out Red Lightning by SSI, an operational game of World War 3. Yeah, as the name indicates, this is about World War Go Goes Hot. It, we are running here Amiga. And yeah, there's different, different scenario picks. This red lightning, I guess, being the grand thing. Yeah, I think for showcase, a short scenario should be enough. Don't even play that. Chemical weapons, of course. Yeah. Pack capability pushovers, Jimmy, that is... Who told you that? Harry, yeah. Okay. He does. Random. No. Moderate. And yeah, as most streamers would pick of course NATO. We will of course also pick a peaceful faction of Warsaw Pact. Yeah, North Atlantic Special Ops. I guess there is some naval and special force activity. Dua air campaign. Yeah. For showcase I will activate everything. You can even manage I don't know what I think that is submarines, but subdivisional deployments that is I guess something else that you might be able to deploy units below divisional level. Limit intelligence, yeah, that is definitely a thing. Just look quite interesting. During NBC, what is it? Good, that is... Invade Austria this turn. Yeah, of course, yeah, immediately invade Austria. You really want to do this? Yes, peacefully invade Austria. Good, wait, um, we don't rerun that in full screen. We can fix that. Better. Let's see, now you should see everything in full screen. Uh, if you use this Win UI, UAE emulator, it's a bit hidden. If you want to scale or stretch, I think an operational war game that is quite fine to stretch. Uh, you need to go to filters and activate automatic scaling. And then you have a nice full screen. Good. That is the operational map here. Uh, let's check it out completely. The North Sea. Big. Why is there no simple left button? Why is it so complicated? Yeah, the entire theater here of Germany and plus. Going south also quite far. I mean, if you invade Austria, yeah, you can already... You already get an idea that this is depicting the entire Germany plus Southern. Uh, that is a strategic overview. Quite pixelated. But that's going to be a forced layout, yeah. We are pushing... About to push into Germany. And yeah, Austria as well. Yeah, okay. So... That's of course, uh, those grand operation games take time. We might do some maneuver here, so you get an idea of this game. I think the counter amount, yeah, I already checked it out before we before I hit the stream. Counter amount for its size is pretty good. Sure, there's of course games like um, 
JTS, WDS, 85, classic uh, cold was so nice. That might be more modern, but they often come quite with a counter amount. You have a unit amount. I sometimes struggle then to have fun with those games when it becomes counter pawn. I mentioned that in another stream. For example, here a comparison between War in Russia by Gary Grigsby, Matrix Edition. And War in the East 1 or 2. I personally, I'd rather would play even War in Russia. I wouldn't really that care much that it is running on DOS. Because um, there, everything is rather right on the vision level. Good. So, we are currently in the most north here. We have some 94 Guards Motor Rifle Division. So division level. Quickly check strategic report. Yeah, other theaters also depicted. I think they are out of your scope, but uh, they were basically show what is happening there. Probably also being influenced by your actions on Central Europe. Iceland so far under NATO control makes C. At C in North Atlantic is currently contested, Norway contested. Chemical warfare begins day one morning. So, chemical warfare already a thing. And some warmongers invaded Austria. Who gave that order? I'm a peaceful. Or I'm on a peaceful offensive, and also requests aid from NATO. We have as here political report. Uh, you have a lot of states represented, so there is some strategic political layer in this game that is quite nice. Where you see who is belonging to what, which might change depending on what you do. Austria definitely won't become now our ally <laughs> after we declared war on them. Yeah, and one thing that is interesting, yeah, you can get a full hex report, especially on new units if you use the fog of war report and check those divisions out and we'll get, yeah, what they're consisting of and then you can examine those units and we'll get a full OOP, yeah, this basically, is it game by Gary Grigsby? I need to check out that. By Gary Grigsby material. Uh, because that is something you won't check out often. Yeah, some players might simply push those division counters over the map. But if you check them in detail, you see the entire OB. Uh, how much tanks they have, BMPs, BRDMs with ATGM configuration, army, assault, army gunship helos. I uh, see that is a typical layout of one. Tank regiment with three motorized rifle uh, regiments. Mech, no, three mech, one mod, yeah, motorized BTR. Some of also called mech. Depends on if you consider um, mech the armored, only truck based. But that would be rather mod, that would be mech. And readiness, everything. Yeah, I really like the detail in this game. That is quite nice. But you don't need to check that. Yeah, you can simply push them over the map. But having that option was nice. Good. Uh, weather report. Could be fair and cloudy. 
mic impact somewhat air operations but not too much yeah and chemical weapons are a thing yeah there's a supply layer which you might need to manage he's currently calculating and will show it to you i guess on a yeah strategic scale uh, what is that? That might be... Is that Berlin? Those trees are isolated. No, not really. What is that? But that might indicate Berlin, yeah. Because Berlin, of course, um, held a special role as it was um, in Cold War. In the Soviet sphere, but with different zones that will be, of course, then in a wide scale attack become isolated quickly. Those Berlin units. And this game is designed by Norm Koga Jr. Uh, Norm Koga has quite a name in wargaming, also known for. The operational art of war, but somebody told me only up to three. Despite they might still use Norm Koga's name, uh, but that is a lot of war games use names like Gary Grigsby, John Tiller, Norm Koga. Why those guys might be not re? Yeah, I, I'm not an expert on that. I rather care for those games, but you get the idea. Yeah, like. If you have a Ubisoft game called Tom Clancy, doesn't mean that Tom Clancy was really involved in that game. And in wargaming, of course, as in the, in the 80s, 90s, there were some names developed that were standing for quality. So they, of course, utilized them. Good, let's start with air operations. Yeah, air operations handling in this game is... And I'll trigger my. This like this thing is already my hotkeys here. Um, I'm music. Cold War is happening. Chemical weapons are used. I want uh, music. Carl music. Good. So we have aircraft here, and you basically um, air operations are handled by picking air types aircraft types and then you can allot them to different missions it's interesting quite unique choice yeah jimmy su 17th air superiority that is yeah su 20 17th, 2022, that is an old school aircraft. No, on full strike. No resting. Nobody's resting here. Yeah? yeah, Su 24, also rather a ground combat aircraft. Doesn't make really sense to put it on air superiority. Yeah, interesting system, quite unique. Su-25 as a classic. Uh, those are more sophisticated, close air support aircraft. Yeah, that is basically the Soviet equivalent of the A-10 Warthog. So I might allocate them all for close air support. They have better uh, uh, situation awareness systems than those classic Sukhoi systems. MiG-21, multi-role fighter. But already behind a couple of gen generations. And we have a ton of them, 1040 aircraft. We might spread them. Yeah, we will put some on air superiority, but most of them will focus on striking. 
But on the other hand, yeah, I mentioned it. Yeah, it is extremely vital. Air superiority is key in modern warfare. You might even throw in your last or your secondary reserve air superiority factors in order to achieve air superiority. Because whoever has air superiority in the air is dictating the air war and might influence the ground combat as well. Yeah, MiG-25, Foxbat, that is definitely something for air security. MiG-27, what is some? Ah, that is those. Uh, it's not the Su-27, yeah, that is air security factor. MiG-29, that is of course a given, that is air security. Lowest range, interceptor, high speed. And these are reserve forces. Ah, recon, reconnaissance force. Uh, let's do tactical reconnaissance. I don't want to drive those guys deep if we don't have air superiority because they will get shot down. Um, but yeah, the consideration is very really important. We might even schedule all MiG-21s for air superiority. Despite be the MiG-21 not being really that much on par with NATO air superiority factors like F-15, F-16, Tornado. Euro factors are not there yet. But if you can't bring the quantity, uh, if you can't bring the quality in numbers, you may need to bring quantity. So I might change my mind here. And we'll issue all multi role factors on the first turn for air superiority. Yeah, Su 25 doesn't make sense for air superiority. They might carry those close range uh, AA missiles, but. Su-24, I must pass, not sure what those Su-24s were able to carry. Judging by the aircraft design, they probably... Those things definitely... They were able to command air security missions, but against a F-16, F-15, or even a F-18 carrier base, might have... And it's not really about the aircraft frame, yeah? it's more about the missile technology. Most what we will expect are sparrows with a couple of new tech AMRAM 120s. Those AMRAMs might blow us out of skies. But they basically almost have fire and forget capability while we need to home our BBR missiles into the target. Yeah. That is fine. Yeah, MiG-21s, all air security. MiG-27, I don't know. Was that a multi-role fighter or was that rather a ground combat? Jimmy. I mean, here you have numbers, yeah. Of course. Three. Three. What? Jimmy has three. So air security then. That thing has a higher, higher air security rating than the MiG-21. So do that. The MiG-23 has air superiority rating 4. We, you are on air superiority duty. Yeah, as I mentioned, the uh, Sukhoi 25. What was it? Flogger? Flogger? NATO code. It's not really good for that. Sukhoi 24 as well. Sukhoi 21 is somewhat better. <laughs> I doubt that. Jimmy, but air superiority in the beginning is super important. Everything that has a value higher than 2 is coming to the party.
Big 29 has the highest rating, makes sense. We had only reconnaissance, I need air security. Re equip those aircraft immediately for. Can I do that? No. You have different values for reconnaissance, okay. Yeah, but still, I not won't do a strategic or deep reconnaissance, especially strategic. Suppose the achievement. Cold War conventional ground warfare would be so fast. Air superiority, that is super important. Everything that has a value of two will hit enemy aircraft. Those Soviet guards on the ground can handle without close air support for the beginning. Rift is useless. Same the Su-25s. So, air everybody is on air support duty. Because air security is really decided very fast. That would be in a Cold War scenario be decided in... Yeah, not. It would be not a matter of months. Uh, let's put it this way. So let her throw everything in that, and, because, and th when the enemy has air security, then you have really a problem. Good, that is done. Yeah, Berlin would be fine. Next special operations. Examine tier the level airborne marine forces. Yeah, let's do that. Jimmy. Uh, Norway, you say, is contested. Norway, or do we want to aid Europe? Whoever controls Norway might control Europe to some extent. Yeah, let's stick with the default thing and let's go to special. Actually, they Beijing, stop it. Good, we have 66 Special Force Spetsnaz operations remaining. Airfield suppression. Um, airfield suppression. I want to put everything into airfield suppression that might lower NATO capability of achieving air superiority. That is really something that I want. I really don't care for railway suppression. Uh, port suppression is of course also a thing. Rear areas, yeah, airfield. We, that is something we might re... what? We may select up to two actions per turn. Good. SSMEs. Airfield suppression. I think mm, achieving air superiority that is in modern warfare extremely important. Let's see what is going on in Norway and Iceland. Nothing happening there and that is out of my scope. Okay, special operations done. Next, Mara Amphibious. Okay, do we have something to do? Okay. I don't know. No. Oh.
any five I would like to deploy airborne forces. Start suiciding them. Yeah, that was a news we could hit. If you can hit that tire, being shot down. Basically, hit Denmark, right? Okay, let's do that. Those guys are scheduled there. Or? Okay, whatever. I have said mic drop there. Let's continue with unit movement. Most important phase. Good. Berlin is closed in. Time to move towards the west. Yeah, we might need to consider that there might be enemy movement. So travel might be faster. Yeah, movement could be a bit more convenient. It's given. Well, of clicks you need to do there for doing basic stuff. That could be handled better. I mean, I'm in movement phase. I picked the movement phase here by right clicking. But yeah, he is asking you for what movement phase. We can also travel, which is basically you is not expecting combat. Maneuver is for a tactical move. But you see, it's quite a lot of tricks. Even with the counter amount being quite okay, um, clicking around that often can be quite some annoying. So I will focus on the north for this showcase, yeah, otherwise it will take quite some time to but in order to show you combat we might push on berlin which is already isolated by bp forces yeah okay Let's bring up the 76 ta tank. Uh, maybe we can check out the detail on those guys. Because that is quite nice. And uh, the movement phase, you can't do that. Arty.
Gut. This should give us some comet here in Berlin. So we will get an idea of comet resolution. One thing I don't like is um, it is asking too many, presenting you too many prompts for movement. Yeah, for me it would make more sense to, um, if you, sure, I get an idea, do you want to maneuver in a comet fashion or do you want to travel in a rather, yeah, travel efficient fashion? Which might sometimes make sense if you bring units from the rear and don't expect any combat or if you want to make a lot of ground in little time but why not then design i don't know here unit maneuver uh, different phase because asking those tons of questions per counter to me that is should be obvious that this is in the end yeah global mode maneuver Travel, you activate that, and every unit you click, click will go into that mode. Without asking for every single counter, always, uh, you want to do that, this or that. And finishing movement simply by clicking again on the counter or something. But traveling with the mouse button here in the below. But yeah, in, in a professional war game, it would be exactly like this, you know, to prevent mishaps. So you need to keep that in mind, yeah. Professional war games might exactly operate in this manner. Where every move needs to be confirmed, every order needs to be confirmed, while commercial entertainment war games should rather focus on convenience. But yeah, professional. Military training war games, they often have those. That is something that comes quite, resembles quite what you have to do here. For every single unit, confirm this and that. Who knows, perhaps this was. This resembles some of this professional war games, or it comes out of that. Otherwise, it is looking quite co detailed. I need to check if it is made by Gary Grigsby because one thing that is really quite surprising is the detail of simulation. Yeah. You can pick a single division and then check out and get the entire OB with readiness and else. That's what I said on. Good, we are done here, I think, for our turn. And Joe is thinking... Yeah, and this game, uh, in order to stress that out, is not traditional turn-based, but it's somewhat Vigo. Yeah? I also think Vigo is having some advantages compared to classic turn-based, where you do stuff, engage units while the enemy is sitting there and watching. And yeah, it is a Vigo game. So you plan stuff. Both plan stuff and then execute it, which I think is closer to reality. Yeah. Turn-based, traditional turn-based, you need to consider um, is not coming from a consideration that this might represent warfare in an authentic manner. It has the capability, but it its ties lies rather in board gaming. Because in board games, you can't pull off Vigo that easily. If you sit together with another human being playing a board game, I imagine you're playing chess and then you say, okay, Jimmy, we both need to do our turns at the same time. Yeah? 
I mean, it is possible, yeah, you would write it down and put it somewhere in order not to cheat, but you get the idea, yeah? usually board games go, you, you turn, my turn, you turn, my turn, why that is rather not reflecting reality of warfare, yeah? the enemy won't stand still while you do your stuff and then say, okay, now it's my turn. So most routes to this turn-based or um, popularity in war games, what uh, I guess is rooted in board games. Good, yeah, all units are under air attack, you don't even see them, uh, but you can start scrolling to them. But basically that is how airstrikes are resolved. See information, who is attacked by what. Not really, not really by what, you simply see air attack. Which perhaps even better. Considering the amount of aircraft. But yeah, the screen jumping to the location would be of course not too bad. We really know where 19th tank division is sitting right now. Yeah, but considering the amount of airstrikes, perhaps it's even better that you can quickly skip through them. Good, joint ground combat and movement phase now happening. And yeah, we're pushing into Berlin. I think that is Berlin, right? Yeah, Berlin. First Guards Motor Rifle Division attacking into Berlin. Attacking HQ. Berlin. Western HQ. And defending units are brigade sized force sitting there together with the HQ. And let's see, uh, RT, non RT. Yeah, we definitely hold the superiority in forces. But 12 to 9 is, I think, not enough to really root out our force that easily. Especially being the Warsaw pack player, you might require something like three times the superiority. And yeah, I in a full playthrough, I would rather simply isolate Berlin and let the supply shortage set in. But in order to show you, that's how Comet looks like. Comet calculation will happen. And yeah, we indeed managed to retreat them, and the retreat path is blocked for some reason. I'm not sure who is retreating here. Uh, look at this, I think our unit was not able to retreat. Yeah, quite even, despite good, we have quite a strong... Ah, uh, uh, there's losses. Uh, Yeah, but this urban warfare uh, is, of course, quite a challenging task. Uh, but you will get an idea how Comet looks in this game. You get some information on the calculation and losses. We didn't manage to defeat those forces, which makes sense. Uh, because they might sit and duck in there into Berlin and might make it a costly urban warfare for you. So isolating it, sieging it, might make more sense for the, in the beginning. So we didn't manage to gain a foothold on Berlin, that was to be expected. But for showcase reasons I attacked this location, in reality I would isolate it, not attack. But now he's calculating supplies.
I mean, sometimes you also isolate units might be not a bad idea to attack them by simply draining the cap the resources. But yeah, can I simply leave them there and sooner or later they might bleed out? So the air bridge. Good. That was basically a one single turn of this game. This air phase, it has quite some unique elements like that you uh, as basically attribute aircraft types. I mean, it makes sense, and most wings would uh, consist, consist of similar aircraft types. Nobody would operate in a single wing, I don't know, MiG 29s mixed in with Su 23s. And I rather really like this abstracted air campaign. Still offers some nice considerations like go for air superiority and with what aircraft. And yeah, ground combat. Would be great to have some map hotkeys, perhaps there's some. But definitely a choice worth to consider even nowadays. You're not scared off by this emulator stuff. When UAE requires a bit of setup, yeah, you need to, what was it, a Kickstarter ROM, which is not shipped with the emulator, which you either need to purchase from some uh, Amiga page, or find it with other means. But it's not that much. And then you can play those Amiga games. Yeah, Control F12 is full screen. That is a button you might look for. So that's not obvious, so don't use this regular Alt Enter thing. And yeah, that was Red Lightning. And see you in the next episode.